Hi everyone, welcome back. Welcome to CSCI 100 Lecture 8. In this lecture, we're going to continue talking about functions. So last time we covered the core ideas around what a function is, when to use one, and how to define one. Today we're going to go on and talk about more advanced features of functions and other details you need to know um, for how to use functions. First, let's start with a quick review of what we covered last time. So the big idea takeaways were about thinking of your function as a kind of subroutine, a package of lines of code that gets given a name that you can then call to execute that, those lines of code. And you might remember that to make your function more powerful, you can have your lines of code take some particular variable which we called a uh, parameter or argument to do different things depending on what variable is passed in. And as soon as you see yourself doing the same sort of thing in different places, that's the time to think function. Uh, using functions, our code becomes more readable. We call this encapsulation because we're encapsulating, kind of wrapping, putting something kind of around um, these lines of code, giving them a name, and then any future user uh, uh, of that function, just of those lines of code, just calls the name of the function to execute those lines of code. Now the vocabulary is very important for functions. And I'm going to kind of try to use it as much as I can in this lecture. So pay careful attention to the words that I use when I talk about functions. When we talk about using a function, the magic word here is calling that function or also executing that function. Now, an actual function call, when you see it written down, like function name, open parenthesis, optionally a list of arguments, close parenthesis, uh, those function calls are, type, are actually a type of expression. And just like any other expression, uh, the function call needs to be evaluated. And that's what Python will do. When you're running your code, as soon as you get to a function call, that function call will be executed, and the expression will be evaluated to some value. Uh, the input values given in that function call are called arguments. You could have no arguments, so just empty parentheses. You could have one argument, so just one value inside of a parenthesis, inside of the parentheses, or you could have uh, more than one argument, in which case they're separated by commas. If you want to create a new function, we call this defining the function. And in the function definition, the list of values that this uh, function can take is called uh, th those values are called parameters. So when a function call happens, the values that are passed in as arguments get assigned to the parameters in the body of the function. And we can return a value uh, from the function using the return statement. And this defines what value the function call will evaluate to. And so when Python actually goes through, sees a function call, runs that function, the value that the function call then evaluates to, just like any other expression, is whatever value is returned from the, uh, from the function, if there is one. Uh, and then for actual syntax for how to define a function, remember we always start with this def keyword, def, which is short for define. Then we have the name of our function, and in parentheses, a comma separated list of all of the parameters for our function. There could be none here, so it could be empty parentheses. It could be one, so no, uh, no uh, commas. Or there could be more than one, in which case the parameter names are separated by commas. And then before the body of our function, we have a colon. And then our body is all of the lines that come after the def line in our function definition that are indented. And so the function definition will continue until a line is dedented back to the previous indentation level. I'll point out these returns that are here. These returns are optional. It's up to you to decide whether you want your function to return something or not. There's not a right or wrong answer here. It depends on what you're trying to do. Great, now that we have that review out of the way, let's get into our functions, the new ideas we're going to learn today. The first thing I'm going to talk about is default parameters. Uh, 
we've shown you how to define a function with parameters. Now I want to point out that there's this handy shortcut. Sometimes a, you want to provide an uh, optional parameter. That means that you know, for most times that you execute this function, you're going to, you want to use the same value for this particular variable. But maybe sometimes someone might want to give a different value. And so Python provides a way for us to specify a default value for parameter in the definition of a function. And that looks like this. So the same you know, def function name and in parentheses parameters as before. But after any parameter that you want to make a default, you can uh, have equals and then some default value. Param2 equals default value. And now inside of the body of the function, if whoever calls your function doesn't pass in a value, uh, passes in only one argument, then the uh, second uh, parameter here, the second argument that's passed uh, that you know, here isn't passed in when it's called, is assumed to be whatever the default value is that's specified in the definition. Um, and so you can see if I had some code here, uh, if you go to call the function and you leave out a, a second value, uh, Python will automatically use this default value for param2. Where, or if the user wants to override that parameter, they can just specify that by putting the parameter name equals and then whatever value they want to override the parameter with. Let's see this in action. It'll be a little clearer why this is handy. So this is some code that introduces a person with their age with some sort of greeting. And so given a name, age, and greeting, uh, we create an age string first, however many years old you are. And then we print out the greeting followed by a comma. This is name. And then they are age string. And notice if you look here, kind of oftentimes when I'm calling this, I have the same greeting hi. Though for Jeremy specifically, I have hello. This might be a good candidate for having a default value for the greeting. So that's what we do down here. We take our code above and we add equals high to the greeting parameter. And now by default, if someone calls this function and provides just two arguments, like Sona23, the greeting that gets printed here um, will be high because it's specified here by default. Same thing for Giselle. Um, and only for Jeremy do we override the body and say hello. Let's just see this in action. So if I run our, our code here, Me.py. You can see that by default, we get hi, this is Sona, hi, this is Giselle, hello, this is Jeremy. So we can override the default value um, just like this. The parameter name equals and then the value we want to override the parameter with. Actually, this might look more kind of familiar. You might have used this already and you didn't even know it. Uh, I've seen that some of you decided to try to uh, probably looked up how to print things on one line because you might have noticed every time you type a print command and give it a string, it'll print that string and then it'll move to the next line. And maybe you wanted to keep printing character by character on a single line. And so for that, our uh, print function actually has a end parameter with a default value of new line, this new line character here. And what this new line character does is it'll go and print, uh, just move the kind of cursor. It's kind of like hitting enter in a, in a Google Doc. It'll move the cursor to the next line. And so because of that, if you have just print hello and then print world, without you know overriding this end character, you would get hello on one line and then world on another. But uh, if you do print hello and then you pass a second parameter uh, argument into the print function and specify you know end equals quotation quotation that will override the end per, uh, parameter of the print function and it'll make it so that instead of having the end be a new line the end will just be an empty string which lets you continue on to print on the same line over here you can see i overrode it with four dashes and so the thing that gets printed out is hello space so our string here hello space 
and then four dashes, which is the end, and then world gets printed on the same line. Um, so let's, again, just head over here and take a look at that. We had print hello, print world. If I run these, you see they're on two, oops, I'll actually run it like this. Clear Python three main.py, hello world on separate lines. Python actually has a default, uh, a default end where you can override the end character. So these are all on the same, so hello is on the same line as world. So if I run this again, I get hello world with no spaces. I could either add a space to hello, or if I wanted to, I could make the end character a space. If I run this again, we'll get hello world. Just to show you this works with those dashes that I showed. Get hello dash 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 world. 